business? No further general business. Uh, councillors, uh, we can now resume the adjourned debate on the motion moved by Councillor Cook. Councillor Cook, um, could you read your motion again, please? And is there any debate? Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, and the motion is that Brisbane City Council commits to upgrading the former East Brisbane Bowls Club for broader community use. Thank you, Councillor Cook. You have 10 minutes. Well, second. Thank you. Oh, sorry, second. Yes, you have 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Mr Chair, this issue of the former East Brisbane Bowls Club site has been um, debated in this chamber a number of times, and I'm not going to rehash the debate of the past, um, but I will say that this motion today, uh, which has the support of the chamber to be urgently debated, is about upgrading this site. Now, since the initial consultation, we know that there has been further rounds of consultation. There's been uh, on-site uh, consultation sessions held. We've had 2,000 people sign the community petition in support, um, not only of saving this site, but that petition also talks about upgrading the facility. We've also had the community rally. Uh, there have been letters that have been sent to the Lord Mayor uh, and to a number of other councillors in the chamber on this issue. Um, the community couldn't be clearer that what they want is for this site to be retained and upgraded. And this LNP Council is simply not listening. We've already heard the Lord Mayor this morning uh, talk about why he thinks this shouldn't happen. He thinks that this is, and I quote, some sort of cooked up campaign. He thinks that there are operatives that are operating in the community, that the over 2,000 people who signed this petition are members of the uh, Labor Party, that they are members of the Greens, um, and that this is a fake community campaign. Uh, Mr Chair, there is a email that has been sent uh, by a member of the community. Uh, his name is Mr Eugene Shannon, and it was sent to myself as well as a number of other councillors in this place. And uh, this is what he says about that exact issue. And I think it demonstrates how the community is feeling about how the LNP have reacted to this issue um, and the, the way that they've dealt uh, not only with this site, um, but of course also with Backbone, who currently occupy the site. He says, I was startled uh, when I heard a few months ago that the council was thinking of bulldozing the bolo. I looked into the issue and found there to be a group of concerned local residents who wanted to save the bolo. I attended the rally to save the bolo, signed the petition and made a submission to the council on the Mowbray Park draft concept plan. He goes on to say, I would like to put on the record that I and many other people that I know who attended the rally, to the best of my knowledge, are neither jugglers nor staffers. I would also like to state here that I am not and have never been a member of a political party. This is not a fake campaign. It is a genuine community-based movement to save a much-needed venue from destruction. Um, couldn't have said it better myself, Eugene. Um, and I have had countless other letters and emails from residents who are absolutely disgusted by the way they have been referred to and spoken about by the LNP Lord Mayor, Adrian Schrinner, and by councillors in this place, both here uh, in the chamber and outside the chamber, and the way that they have been treated by the members of this chamber who are meant to represent their interests and their views. Um, and that includes the local councillor for that area, uh, Councillor Fiona Cunningham. And I'll be very interested, and I think the members of her community will be very interested to hear what she has to say about this today. Um, we know that the LNP Council says that uh, the community facility uh, that is the former East Brisbane site should be demolished rather than refurbished to save ratepayer funds. Mr Chair, I'm not sure um, what better use ratepayer funds could be put to than the upgrading and maintenance of our much needed community facilities. We know that there's over 40 community organisations on the wait list right now for community facilities in the eastern suburbs. If it's not Backbone that is in this location, there are many others who would happily uh, take up that space and lease this council facility. This council uh, says 
that resident feedback supports the removal of the East Brisbane Bowls Club site. Again, Mr Chair, over 2,000 residents signing the petition, over 100 residents attending the community rally, countless letters, countless emails have been circulated by genuine community members who want this facility saved. Um, in the last few days, we now know that the internal documents uh, that have been released um, under the right to information uh, indicate that there was, um, and Mr Chair, I'm not sure if this was a uh, deliberate misrepresentation or misleading of the results of that feedback, but it's become um, clear and has been exposed that uh, there was feedback provided in the community engagement summary that uh, residents wanted several improvements, such as better park lighting, the reinstatement of a bandstand and better management of commuter cyclists. It also included a bullet point saying residents wanted to upgrade the Bowls Club site for community use, underutilised and unattractive. The June draft concept plan published on the council website, including the identical summary of resident feedback, but curiously removed the word upgrade and simply said, Bowls Club site are underused and unattractive. Mr Chair, um, if that's not a de deliberate uh, misleading of this feedback, I don't know what is. To remove that one word and have an identical document with that one word removed is simply um, misleading the public around what this LNP Council always intended, and that was the removal of this community facility and site. Mr Chair, today um, this council, this LNP administration, has a chance to rectify the wrongs that they have perpetrated against the East Brisbane community, and they have a chance to commit to upgrading this former East Brisbane Bowls Club site for broader community use. They have a chance to demonstrate to this community that they are finally listening, that the thousands of residents who have provided feedback and support for upgrading this facility are being listened to. It is only Labor and the Greens who have listened to these residents who have stood up for them and reflected the needs of this community. And it is shameful that at every opportunity, this LNP administration and this Lord Mayor have taken swipes at members of the community and publicly and on the council, on this record, in this place, absolutely um, perpetrated what some might say is defamation of those re residents. Um, and their intentions and misled the public as to how this site should be managed um, into the future. We say it shouldn't be demolished. We say it should be upgraded for broader community use. And we're going to continue to stand with these residents and support them throughout this campaign. Today is the opportunity for the LNP Council, for the LNP Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner to stand up, do the right thing and support the upgrade of this facility. Thanks, Chair. Clock three, sir. Councillor Three, you have the call. Thanks. Rise to speak in support of the motion. Um, and I, I would just say at the outset that if the LNP's position is that it um, still hasn't quite decided what the community sentiment is or that there's still some uncertainty and, and you want to do more consultation, I think it would be better for the LNP administration to move that the motion lie on the table rather than vote it down altogether and send the wrong signal to members of the public. Um, personally, I think we should be supporting this motion, but um, I, I wanted, I guess, to address my comments through you, Chair, to the Lord Mayor and to Councillor Cunningham, to Councillor Howard and to Councillor Davies, as I see them as the most relevant decision makers. Um, I, I, I used to be the councillor representing this area. The ward boundaries were redrawn at the 2020 election, and I was very sad to lose this um, part of East Brisbane from my electorate. Uh, but I do feel that I have a, a pretty good sense of the local sentiment. Um, I, I live not far from Mowbray Park, actually, and, and I talk to a lot of residents on a, on a regular basis about what they think is happening in the uh, think about what's proposed for the park and, and what the park needs. And, and I just want to highlight for the Lord Mayor um, that if someone says a building is ugly, that doesn't necessarily mean they think the building should be 
knocked down, it can mean that they think the building should be improved. If someone says that uh, a set of bowling green lawns is underutilised, that's not the same as saying that the bowls club building itself is underutilised. And I think those are really important distinctions and I hope Councillor Davies will reflect on them sincerely because I think a little bit of, um, a little bit of, this, bit of this has been lost in translation where uh, some residents have, I think, understandably said, hey, the old bowls club building looks like it could do with a revamp. Yeah. Um, and sorry, I can't hear you, Councillor Adams. Was that? No. OK. Uh, the old bowls club, they've said that the old bowls club could do with a revamp. Um, that's not the same as saying that they think it should be completely demolished and replaced with green space. Uh, this is a, maybe a subtle, but it's an important distinction. And I worry that the administration has heard feedback from some residents and misinterpreted that feedback and is now jumping to conclusions. Uh, I think reasonable people can have different views about the relative merits of um, the various activities that are going on at Bowls Club. Personally, I think it's freaking amazing what Backbone is doing there. They're holding heaps of great events. They're making the space available to a wide range of community groups. It's one of the few affordable community spaces where um, artists on lower incomes can find spaces to rehearse and perform. Um, I think my greatest regret about the space is that Council has made it quite difficult for the Bowling Green lawns themselves to be used for community events and projects. I remember a couple of years ago there was a push to set up a community garden on the Bowling Green lawns and at the time Council was very resistant to that due to concerns that the, um, about potential contaminated land. But the point here is that it's, it's not Backbone's fault that the Bowling Green lawns have been underutilised. There are many proposals on how those sp that space could be better utilised from um, informal pop-up markets to outdoor gigs to all sorts of stuff, but the council itself has placed restrictions on how that outdoor space could be used. But the mere fact that council has placed some restrictions on how those outdoor bowling greens can be used shouldn't be misinterpreted as evidence that the space doesn't have potential as a viable community facility. The building itself is getting heaps of use. And I think one of the things that's frustrated me most about this whole process is that Council seems to, on the one hand, acknowledge that Backbone is doing a lot of great stuff there. And I, I heard Councillor Vicky Howard in this chamber a couple of months back say, talking about how great Backbone was and, and how they were doing really good stuff with that site. And there's this, it seems to be this strange cognitive dissonance operating at the moment where Council, on the one hand, is saying, yes, the facility is getting a lot of great use. And then on the other hand, saying, oh, we want to knock it down. Um, I, I heard the Mayor's comments earlier about green space and I just wanted to remind the Mayor that this part of Mowbray Park is directly next to the very noisy, very busy Lytton Road. Of all the places and all the parts of Mowbray Park where you might want to have a picnic or you might want to kick a ball around, this is the least attractive. It's furthest from the river, it's closest to a very noisy six-lane road which actually widens out into an eight-lane road just past the park. So the suggestion that knocking down the bowls club and replacing it with green space represents a, a good proposition for the community and is in the public interest, I think is misconceived or ill-conceived. And I would simply encourage the mayor to, to think more, to visit the space um, and, and think more deeply about how best it can be used, because I would suggest that it is best utilised as a community facility um, of, as, is, as it currently is. And if the council wants to make some changes to the bowling green lawns and find ways to open that up or make that a bit more usable for a wider range of community groups, then fair enough. But let's not conflate um, underutilisation of the bowling green lawns with the, with the bowls club building. I think that's a really important distinction to make. I think Backbone is perfectly capable of activating and using the bowling green lawns really well. I've seen them organise a number of great events out on the bowling green lawns. They've had um, trapeze artists, they've had gigs, they've had all sorts of great stuff out there. Um, but if the administration really is insistent that the Bowling Green lawns aren't being well utilised, then repurpose them, but don't repurpose the Bowls Club building itself. I also wanted to highlight that if Council is really concerned about ugly buildings taking up space in Council parks, then by far the ugliest building in the park and the biggest waste of space is the Anglican Grammar School bo boat shed down by the river. 
And I've got nothing against Churchy, and I'm not suggesting that the boat shed should be removed. But objectively speaking, it is a way uglier building. It's larger, and it's taking up prime riverfront land of Mowbray Park. So if council is saying, hey, we need to demolish community facilities to make room for public green space, then that naturally begs the question, why is the private school rowing shed, which doesn't get anywhere near as much use as Backbone Bowls Club, why is that also not being proposed for demolition? I don't think either of the buildings need to be demolished, just to be clear, and, and I, again, I don't want the mayor to misconstrue me on this, but why is it that the Bowls Club, which is really well utilised and is occupying a space within the park which has marginal value for picnics and other forms of active recreation and green space use, why is the Bowls Club being seen as expendable while the rowing club, which takes up prime picnic real estate down by the river um, and, to be honest, doesn't get anywhere near as much use, why is that being, um, being preserved and there's not even a conversation about readapting that space? Um, as I've said in this chamber previously, if council wants to create more green space within Mowbray Park, the obvious option is to uh, s d reduce the size of the car park, which is right by the river. Um, that car park has some of the best reviews in Queensland. Um, it's, it's an amazing spot for a picnic, but right now it's all bitumen. If the council really wants to create more green space, that's a place to do it. But again, I want to remind the administration that just recently it made the decision to sell off blocks of publicly owned land in the vicinity of Mowbray Park for private development. And so if on the one hand the administration is arguing that we need to knock down public community facilities that are well used and well activated in order to create green space, but is simultaneously selling off public green space, that starts to look a little inconsistent and hypocritical. Um, I'm really eager to emphasise that um, al although obviously the Greens and Labor have been standing with the community and seeking to amplify their voices, this is not a partisan party political campaign. It is, it is quite genuinely and quite sincerely a group of concerned residents, both locals and residents from across the city who feel passionate about preserving backbone, um, who don't want to see it go. And the fact that other councillors and other parties are standing with them and, and helping amplify their voices is something that should be applauded rather than um, being seen as something that delegitimises the campaign. But again, I, I really do, through you, Chair, implore the Lord Mayor, don't rush this decision, don't jump to conclusions. If you have to do more consultation before you make up your mind, then by all means, do more consultation. But it, it would be a real tragedy for the suburb of East Brisbane and, and for Mowbray Park and the citywide community that really loves and values Backbone. It would be a real tragedy to lose that community space, particularly when there are so few community facilities in the inner south side. Um, Backbone has been successful in part because bands from West End and Woolloongabba and all over the place are coming there to perform gigs because they don't have anywhere else to perform. But setting up a small community theatre out at Seven Hills, which at a venue that apparently others are already seeking to use, is not a good alternative proposition when local artists and performers need that space in the 4169 postcode. So please, at the very least, rather than voting this motion down, consider tabling it. Thanks. Councillor Three, your time has expired. Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to rise to enter the debate and thank Councillor Cook for putting uh, the urgency motion to uh, Council today. Uh, when we had the debate uh, in this place while we were all on Zoom a few months ago, um, I was contacted by quite a few uh, residents who were listening to that debate afterwards, uh, many of them thanking me for speaking up, but all of them um, talking about how important it was to uh, save the East Brisbane Bowls Club and particularly to continue supporting Backbone. Um, so it's not lost on me um, that this is a genuine community process, um, that residents feel that they haven't been listened to at this point by council. I just want to put a few things on the record today because um, a lot of this uh, issue that's been raised now is thanks to a journalist, Lucy Stone, um, who's covered council for quite some time, uh, who conducted an RTI um, and uh, read the 560 submissions um, by uh, submitters to the feedback process. Um, now, 
it's quite shocking to read her summary of that submission process. 560 residents made submissions. Lucy indicates that seven of the 560 supported demolition of the actual bowls club. So let me repeat that. Seven of the 560 supported demolition of the East Brisbane Bowls Club. Now, I'm sure there are a whole heap of views in there. The, her report goes on to talk about all the feedback people gave, which is very broad, as you might, imed, uh, might imagine. Uh, people want the greens used differently. They want markets. They want art. They want, you know, there's everything. So we all know how that process works. Um, but to see council's response, and this councillor Davis is quoted in this, she says that the seven of the 560 people who asked for demolition, that reflects the majority of the views of uh, those people who put in submissions. Now, seven out of 560 um, is a statistical blip. It doesn't represent the majority view. It doesn't even represent the minority view. It's a calculation error. It is shocking to me that Brisbane City Council, it seems, has doctored a report, and this is the thing that shocked me in that article, that somebody has removed key language that changes the meaning of the consultation that Brisbane residents put forward in good faith to this council to consider. Who did that? Was it Councillor Howard? Was it ENC? Was it Councillor Davis? Was it council officers? The big question is who changed the language and who has deliberately misrepresented the views of residents? Was it a mistake? I don't know. Clearly not, because Councillor Davis has doubled down on it in the media reports. So if at that time, and I'm sure Lucy would have done this, brought to Council's attention that there were mistakes in the report, um, Council could have gone, oh my goodness, okay, yes, we can see there's a bit of a problem here, but that's not what happened. That's not what happened. Councillor Davis doubled down and said um, that demolition represents the views of uh, the majority of submitters. Funny enough, that seems to represent the views of the LNP from three or four months ago, doesn't actually represent the views of the residents who have, in good faith, contributed to this process. And then today, today, we see the Lord Mayor of this city, a man who is supposed to be a civic leader, exercise leadership and respect to the Brisbane residents uh, under his um, watch. What does he do when the matter comes up for debate? He calls them fake. He calls, he calls the residents that he invited to make submissions on a process about the future of a valuable community asset in their community. They do it. 560 of them do it. And guess what? The Lord Mayor of this city calls them fake, not once, but repeatedly today. That's disgusting behaviour. It was pretty clear from the debate a few months ago that the fix was in on this. And, and now to see how the lies that have been manufactured by this LNP administration have been undermined by the actual information that's been found through the RTI process is really quite shocking. It reflects badly on the LNP administration um, certainly, as far as I can see, this would be under Councillor Howard's um, supervision. So I would certainly like her to stand up in this debate and say how a report, the language in a report was changed. I'd certainly like Councillor Davis to stand up and explain to why seven out of 560 respondents who supported demolition represents the majority of views, because, you know, Maths is, uh, you know, not my strong suit, it's fair enough to say, but seven out of 560 submitters is certainly nothing like that. So this LNP administration is treating residents with contempt. This LNP administration um, is trying now to fix the report to reflect the predetermined outcome 
that they made their minds up about months ago. And that is absolutely appalling behaviour. Now, I don't know what they're going to do here. I hope they vote for Councillor Cook's motion, but I suspect they're not going to and they're just going to vote it down. Um, I, I think that um, this council is doing a great disservice to people by calling them fake, by not listening to their concerns. Sadly, after 13 years and multiple consultation processes by this council, this is not uncommon to see people's views being ignored, misrepresented and just trampled on by an administration that's going to do what they want to do rather than working with the community to achieve an outcome. Now, Councillor Cook and Councillor Shree have outlined um, any number of ways that compromise can be found. Um, and this council clearly can upgrade this building. It is in a really difficult position. Um, and I agree completely with Councillor Shree uh, that it's, you wouldn't want to sit where the edge of the building is and hang your feet out over on the wall onto the footpath of uh, Linton Road because it'd be pretty unpleasant from a noise point of view. So there is a compromise here. The only issue we've got is whether or not this LNP administration has any kind of moral fortitude to actually compromise and find a good outcome that represents the community's views. Upgrade the building, repurpose the bowls greens, turn it back into park if you want. Um, but people wanted barbecues and they wanted um, markets. All those things can be done on uh, the bowls club site with a very little, very little um, uh, change. So I just think that this LNP administration has been caught out uh, misleading um, people about the outcome. I just want to thank all the residents out there who are contributing to this process. I'm listening to you. Um, I think it's appalling the way uh, the Lord Mayor is calling uh, your feedback fake. I also want to thank Lucy Stone for publishing her article um, so we could see what's going on behind the scenes. Um, and I just hope that this council and the LNP councillors here um, will do the right thing, listen to the community, um, compromise, and we can get a better outcome for residents uh, who live in this part of the city. And we can get a great outcome for a community group that are activating this space brilliantly, even by council's own admission, they're doing a good job. So I urge all LMP councillors to support this motion. Thank you, Chair. I Sorry, rise to I'm, I'm going to have to say that again. Further speakers, Councillor Landers. Thank you, Chair. I wish to rise on the sp uh, motion, speak on the motion before us. A recent uh, survey during public consultation on the future of Mowbray Park vision showed that most residents wanted to use Mowbray Park more for picnics, barbecues and recreation. And that's precisely what our proposed plan will deliver. In the survey, residents put forward a range of ideas and our draft plan reflects what is most popular and feasible, while preserving the park's historic aspects such as the Croquet Club. Overwhelmingly, the community is clear about the things that people most wanted in Mowbray Park were relaxation and informal recreation, picnics and barbecues, and being able to safely visit or commute through the park at night. Removing the building formerly used as a bowls club rather than spending ratepayers' money upgrading it would fulfil the wishes of most residents for more usable public space in Mowbray Park. I also wanted to note that we are in advanced talks with Backbone about a fantastic opportunity to move to a modern purpose-built arts facility just four kilometres away. Point so of this much-loved organisation... Point of order, Councillor Shree. I'm very concerned the councillors misleading the chamber because I have it on good authority that there is very, very little appetite to relocate to an alternative facility. There's very little what, sorry? Appetite for Backbone to relocate to an alternative facility. Oh, well, facility. you're making I... a, a debating point. Sure. I'm not sure that's a point of order, Councillor. Landers, you can continue. Thank you, Chair. Um, as I was saying, uh, that will enable this much-loved organisation to continue to thrive. The Mowbray Park Vision draft concept plan's list of top suggested ideas for improvement referred to the Bowls Club site as underutilised and unattractive because this was the more common perception of residents. 
I understand the officers from Councillor Davis's area are currently considering all feedback received during the consultation period before a decision is made by Council. And while Council has funding allocated for a number of community facilities to be upgraded through this year's budget, there is no allocation for this site at this time. Thank you. Councillor Landers, any further debate? So we'll now put the motion. Oh, Do sorry, Councillor, yes. Councillor Cook, you have five minutes to sum up. Thank you, Mr so. Chair. Um, Mr oh, Chair... Um, correct, correction, I, you have... I, Councillor Cook, oh. you have ten minutes to sum up. Uh, thank, thank you for that additional five minutes, Mr <laughs> Chair. Um, I promise not to take that long. Uh, Mr Chair, this has been quite a fascinating uh, debate that we've just heard. Um, I thank Councillor Johnson and Councillor Shree for their contributions. I am a little uh, surprised and shocked that Councillor Landers is the uh, poor person that has to get up on behalf of the LNP administration. Uh, we didn't hear from Councillor Davis as the chair. We didn't hear from the Lord Mayor of this city. We didn't hear from the Deputy Mayor of the city. We haven't heard from Councillor Howard, who is the, the chair of the Lifestyle and Community Services Committee. We didn't even hear from the local councillor um, whose ward this building fills in. Um, none of those LMP councillors um, decided to participate and contribute to this debate. Instead, we see Councillor Landers um, with her pre-recorded script, which pretty much identically mirrors the statement that was made to the ABC um, on this issue, get up and deliver quite frankly, um, what is a complete and utter misrepresentation of the facts and of not only uh, Backbone's position, but of the community's position. Um, not only have they doubled down, they've tripled down on these, and I'm, I'm not going to use the word um, that we are not allowed to use in this place, um, misrepresentations um, that have been made to the community and to the public on this issue. Um, I just, um, Councillor Shree, I think, said um, that this LNP council is inconsistent and hypocritical. Um, I think that puts it pretty, pretty mildly. Um, and Councillor Johnson talked about how seven somehow seemingly overrides thousands of petitioners, overrides over a hundred at a rally, overrides countless submissions, overrides a complete second round of consultation that we know um, has occurred. Seven. It's a blip. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous that this motion um, is not going to be supported by the LNP administration today. Um, if this LNP administration and this Lord Mayor are prepared to show a complete and utter disregard and disdain to thousands of residents who feel so strongly about this issue that have taken an active interest have participated in good faith in the consultation, um, if they are willing to completely disregard those views, what hope do regular residents have who don't have thousands behind them? What hope does a single resident in the suburbs have when they have an issue with this council? I mean, they're simply, their voice is simply snuffed out. It's appalling. It's disgraceful. And they all sit there and make zero contribution on this issue, including the local councillor who is elected to represent their views, to represent the views of residents in East Brisbane. And they don't have a voice. The voice is on this side of the chamber and they are feeling like they've been left behind. So, Mr Chair, um, I hope that the LNP considers their position that they reflect on what has happened, um, not just today, but what has happened over the last couple of months as this issue um, has been continued uh, to be brought to this place, to be debated, so that perhaps the IMP could see the light and start lis listening to the residents um, of East Brisbane and surrounds to listen to the community, um, to listen to what Backbone wants, and I agree with Councillor Shree. Backbone has made very clear they want to stay. But if they don't want to stay, which is within their right, I know that there are plenty of other community organisations who would love to have that space. We know there's at least 
40 groups on the wait list. We need more community facilities, not less, and this LNP administration seems to be intent on bulldozing them instead of saving them. And that's an absolute disgrace. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Councillor Cook. We'll now move to a vote on this motion, the motion being the Brisbane City Council commits to upgrading the former East Brisbane Bowls Club for broader community use. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. All, all opposed, please say no. No. The noes have it. Division. Division. Division called by Councillor Cassidy and Councillor Cook. Please ring the bells. Thank you, councillors. The division is the vote on Councillor Cook's motion. All those in favour, please say aye and raise your hand so you can be counted. Aye, aye, aye. Thank you. All opposed, please say no and raise your hands. Aye. Any abstentions? Clarks? Mr Chair, the noes have it. The voting being six in favour and 14 against. Thank you. I declare that motion lost. Uh, councillors, uh, I now declare this meeting closed. We'll have a short 15-minute uh, adjournment. Well, it's not actually an adjournment, but a pause, uh, so that we can resume the meeting of the 14th of September after a 15-minute break to give the clerks a chance to reset the equipment. Thank you. We'll see you back here in 15 minutes. <laughs>